Hey, welcome back to this installment of the Next Hub course. In the previous videos, we looked at how to set up Next Hub and then just some of the internals that Next Hub provides. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Drizzle ORM. It's an object relational mapping software that you can use in your TypeScript apps to talk to your database. To be even more specific, it takes your SQL database, your SQL database, and maps your columns, rows, statements, queries, and all those types of things to code that you can use in your TypeScript apps. The reason you might want to use this is to convert your string SQL type stuff into TypeScript type safe objects that you can use to query and have a little bit more confidence that your code actually references things that exist or you know what the return type is when you pull something out of the database and you know what types you need to provide when you put something into the database. So let's look at how to get started with Drizzle. So adding Drizzle to your Next Hub app is actually pretty simple. You basically only need two dependencies. The first dependency we're going to install is the Drizzle kit um, development dependency and the Drizzle kit dependency is a CLI tool that you can use to run things like migrations or inspect your database etc. So we'll first be installing that CLI tool and then we also need the Drizzle dependency itself. So let's use bun to install that dependency and as mentioned in the first video I'm using bun. Um, bun version 1.1.25 as of now uh, but you can use npm or pnpm just note that you would have to have node installed on your computer and um, if you are using bun you have to install bun as well by going to bun.sh all right so the cli tool for drizzle would be drizzle kit so the way we install that we can just do bun add uh, development and just say drizzle kit and this will pull down the dependency and just um, have everything you need to run the CLI um, commands. The second dependency we're going to install is a runtime dependency called drizzle ORM. So we'll add that without the D flag and just say drizzle ORM. And what this is, it's the entire module of drizzle that provides mappings to SQLite. It provides mappings to SQL, Postgres, all the different SQL dialects that you would need to um, run your database queries from your application. Then finally, for Drizzle to know how to um, generate your migrations and all those kinds of things, you would need to add a configuration file to your project. So we have the uh, shipped project that we've been working out through on throughout the last few videos. And we're going to, in the root of the project, we're going to create a file called drizzle.config.ts. So to get started in the config file, we'll import the define config um, helper to have typings on our config from drizzle kit. So this is part of the development dependency because the configuration file is used at generation time and all um, not in the runtime itself. So what we want to do is export default that config so Drizzle can pull it in and read. And the first thing we need to give it is the dialect. And if you remember, Next Hub uses uh, Cloudflare's D1. And Cloudflare D1 is based on the SQLite, um, SQLite, SQLite uh, engine. So we'll use SQLite to talk to D1. The next thing we need to give it is our schema path. So our schema is going to live in our server. We don't want to put things that belong in the app itself on um, the client side, but we, we want to keep everything grouped up in the server in a database file. So I'm going to give it the path to server, uh, database, and then schema.ts. That's where we'll write the structure of our applications, tables and columns and the types of them and everything. And then lastly, we need to tell Drizzle where should it generate the raw SQL SQL files to um, on when it runs the generate um, command. So we also want to do that in server database, but then we want to tell it to uh, put it in the migrations folder. So this one doesn't take an extension, it's a folder so that it can put those files in sequence. 
So before we continue, let's just have a quick talk about migrations um, because maybe not everyone is too clued up with what migrations are. If you are, just skip this part. Basically what a migration is, it's just a way for you to be able to maintain the changes that are made in the structure of your database um, over time. So imagine you run a query in your database, something like create table users with the ID being this and the number being that, etc. So if you run that query directly, say from a CLI or something, you run it once and you clear your CLI out and it's never to be seen again. There's no record of what happened to the database over time you can go introspect your database and see oh okay there is a user table and it has these columns and everything but over time as your database grows you want to be able to have a record of what changes were made at what time and if you work with a team of developers they can easily go reference the sq the sql files that were generated and know what happened to the database over time. So now that we have a little bit of an idea what uh, the migrations do, let's create a very basic uh, users table. Uh, this video is not gonna go into creating the full users yet. That will be in the next video when we actually create every single row and column. But let's go to um, our server because we told uh, drizzle that the server will be uh, the house for all of this and we'll create a new folder called database and then inside the database folder we'll create a schema.ts uh, file so now we're in the schema.ts file we can import some nice helpers from drizzle orm to uh, generate these tables so we, we're going to import some stuff from uh, drizzle ORM and then slash you can see there are many um, different dialects and everything that we can use and you would think that uh, you might want to use uh, D1 here because this is um, Cloudflare but actually we're going to use SQLite core SQLite core because D1 understands the SQLite um, dialect and from here we're going to import sqlite table and we're going to import uh, integer that's all we're going to use for now just to showcase how drizzle does all of its stuff with migrations and then what we're going to do is we're going to export const users equals a sqlite table which we give it the same name users and then in this object we define what the um columns are that we want on the users table and for today we're just going to create the id column just to show you how the migrations are generated and then in the next video we'll populate all of the stuff that we need for user generate a new migration and then update our tables so we can go into the user we'll say the user is going to be uh, an integer and then inside the integer we're going to say id and we're going to say primary key because we want um we want the primary key to be our ID. And in this case, we're using auto incrementing um, uh, integer IDs, but you could use maybe a string uh, UUID or ULIT, any sort of sortable string ID that's very difficult to um, get clashes on. But for simplicity's sake, we're just gonna use um, integer primary keys. And there are reasons why you might not want to do this, like IDs, um, sequential IDs might be a security vulnerability if you say have an endpoint that goes slash ID or slash user slash ID. Um, if you know, if you seem to pick up that slash one is giving you a user, you might be able to query slash two, but you can prevent that by writing better endpoints. So we'll say auto increment true. So what this is going to do is every time a new user is inserted, it just bumps up the ID from the previous one. So that's all we need for now. Um, we're going to spend a lot of time in this during the course when we build relations between tables and things that need to talk to each other, videos and um, maybe sessions and stuff like that. But for now, let's just showcase what this does. Now to actually generate your migration file, um, you would use drizzle kit to do that so there's two ways you can do that you can do it manually in the cli in the root of your project where your drizzle config is you can run bun x or uh, npx or whatever tool you use but i'm going to use bun x and then drizzle kit um, generate and that's going to 
look at your schema it knows from the config where that exists it's going to convert it into sql statements and then it's going to output it in your migrations folder but instead of having to run this manually or remember it every time let's document it in code by going to our package.json and then we can go to our scripts and then we'll add a new script saying db generate and what this is going to do it's going to generate our um, migrations or our sql from our schema file so in this case we don't have to run bun x because um, you can just call the dependency directly because it is a dev dependency within the same package json so now we can just say generate and to run that we need the cli we can do bun run db generate or even simpler you can just do bun db uh, generate it knows that this isn't a bun command so it's going to look in your package.json scripts so we'll run bun db generate and then it looks at um, our con i mean our config and then from our config it infers where our schema is and then it creates that uh, random name uh, sql file that it uses to run migration so let's take a peek at that file to see what it actually did we can go to our uh, server file our database migrations and this is the um, migration file we can go to that and you'll see it's a simple create table users and it doesn't use if not exists or yeah if not exists because this migration is not supposed to run multiple times on your actual database it should only run once um, because of how drizzle maintains the migrations tables internally internally so you can see it did everything that we wanted it's a id integer primary key auto increment not null that's what we want on our users so we know that's okay and we can go back and there's also this meta folder and you don't have to worry about this just don't delete it but um, this is just basically internal housekeeping for drizzle to to look at how things were generated and this is the journal of the different um, migrations that it that it made um, if you haven't run your migrations on your production database yet and you're still just testing out um, be cautious because you don't know if it's you don't always know if you might have run it or not but then you can just delete this file and delete the meta folder and just run it again so how do we actually run these migrations um, you have your SQL file now but you're not really sure on how to run it you can use a um, Nitro plugin for that. So I'm, I'm in the server folder now and I'm going to create a new directory called plugins. And then inside the plugins directory, I'm going to create a new file called migrations.ts. And then in this file, I'm going to say export def uh, default define Nitro plugin. And it wouldn't know what that is for now because we have to do our next uh, prepare statement to have it know what the um, nitro plugin is because we're using auto imports so we can go back to the server plugins migrations and now we have our nitro plugin um, which should be defined oh, there we go so now it knows what it is and this takes a function i believe and probably this has to be an async function because these things will be async and then very important we don't want to let this nitro plugin run in production when your app is actually live so we're going to do a quick check to say that if um, it's not dev mode so that we check by doing import.meta.dev so if that is not a thing then we just return out uh, meaning we only run this in development mode and then there is another nice helper to make sure that our connection to our database and everything is established before we check this so there is a um, on hub ready function and this function takes a callback um, for you to run things and in here is where we'll uh, migrate the database so how do we migrate the database again um, drizzle comes in clutch here by providing us a uh, import migrate function uh, from this time we're going to do drizzle orm d1 um, and then migrate a tor i believe it's not auto completing but i think that is the uh, function for it 
Um, and the reason we're doing migrate tour from D1 is because this is actually going to run in your, um, in your D1 database. Um, okay, so now that we have the migrate function, we also kind of need to get our database to connect to, to tell it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say await migrate. And then if you remember from the previous video where we looked at some of the internals, there is a um, nice function called um, hub database that we can use to um, get our database. But really at this point, we don't really want to use the uh, hub database directly like this. We want to have our drizzle um, wrapping around it. So let's create our own server composable. Um, and that we do in the server folder and then utils. And then we have this database from the previous video. Um, we don't really need any of these right now. These were just for um, explaining some of the things you can do with Drizzle. But what we're going to do here is we're going to import uh, Drizzle from Drizzle ORM and then D1. So Everywhere except your schema, you'll use D1 instead of S, uh, SQLite core. So we're importing Drizzle from there, and we also want to import our schema. And we'll do we'll just import the entire schema as schema from um, database and then schema. So we're importing every single exported thing there. So our tables would be there. And then what we want to do also is export some of Drizzle's helpers. And you'll see um, why this is necessary later on in um, as we go along. But we're going to export from uh, D1, Drizzle ORM D1. And we want the SQL, I mean, sorry, just Drizzle, not D1. We want the SQL, uh, we want the equal, we want the um, probably not. Oh, and of course we want uh, and and or just for, um, I think we'll remove the not for now. I, we won't be using that much, but we're exporting this from Drizzle RM so that it's also automatically imported into our entire project. We also want to export our tables, um, which is basically just the schema. And then we want to export the composable that we actually use. So we're going to export function use drizzle. So compo composables have these um, sort of convention that you use the use prefix. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, return drizzle. And then in here, we're going to use the hub database. So it knows which database we're using. And then we are going to give it the schema. So now we have a, a typed drizzle instance um, on this. And we can also use this file to export um, some typings of our of our different tables. So we can do something like export type user equals um, tables.user users dot uh, infer select. All right, so it's not understanding tables.users. So let's go to our schema and see what's going on. Uh, and that's because we export user instead of users. So if we go back here, um, we now have the type of schema. And now it should be able to tell us what the... We can do schema.users.infer select. And we have to add type of to that. So now if we hover over user, you can see that it has the type of an object that has ID number because that's all we we added. But in the case of the migrations and stuff, we basically just want to have this use drizzle function. Okay, so now that we have use drizzle in there, uh, let's look at what how we can use it. So we want to run our migrations in our Nitro plugin. And now we are using the migrate function from the migrator in drizzle ORM and it's asking for a database. So the way we give it that database is with our new um, composable, server composable called use drizzle. And we don't have to explicitly import this. It's going to say cannot find name, but we can run uh, bunx next prepare just to get all the composable types generated and everything. And then we can go back to our server and um, 
util I mean um, plugins and migrations and now it knows that this is a drizzle um, database so it expects the database and it expects the config so what should be in this config we have to tell it where to get our migrations. so we're going to say migrations folder and this can be an absolute path from this uh, file so we're going to say database um, migrations so that's where it should look for our migrations and that basically does it this will run your database migrations every time you run your development server and we'll look at how to apply that in development and production. So the easiest way to run your database migration locally is to just do uh, bun dev because this is a development environment and you'll look at the logs and we have no way of knowing did our migration actually run. So now you can see it can't find the meta.journal.json file. So let's go have a look at what is happening over there. The reason we have that error is because we I incorrectly said that it has to be a um, relative. I said absolute, but I made it relative. So we have to do this from the root of the project. So from the root, we go to server database migrations. And we actually want to see some sort of output in the console that our migrations actually run. Ran. So we can just do uh, import consola uh, from consola. And you don't have to install consola because it is shipped with uh, Nuxt. So in this case, when it's done, we can just do it dot then and just say consola dot info migrations complete. And I think we want to make this a success, but also maybe we want to check if something went wrong. So we can say uh, consola dot error and then migrations failed with the error. So let's try running this again with a uh, bun dev and we should see either success or failure so now you can see the applications building and nitro plugins run at the um, server warm-up so now you can see migrations completed which means our database actually has what we need right now um, i'm going to show you how you would run this on your actual nuxt hub production environment and it's super simple you'll just do bun dev and then with the remote flag now if you do this it's gonna look at your settings of how you are connected to your next hub platform so probably this will fail the first time because it doesn't know where your um, next hub project is and the way you can set that up is by running uh, bun x or npx and then next hub link and then it's going to provide you a list of your projects and then allow you to run this on production because it's going to link your project, your local project to your remote project. But we won't do that for now. Um, we're still in sort of the development phase of the database and we know it has run now. So let's look at how we can use Drizzle just to do a basic query. So we're back in the application's root file now, root folder. And what we want to do is just set up an example API point. So these are old endpoints that I used in the previous video to um, demonstrate some of the stuff, but we aren't actually going to use these in the application. So we're starting to get into building the actual platform now. But for today, we'll also run a, an example endpoint, which we'll delete after this video because it's not going to be something that we actually use in the app. So um, I'm going to show you that you can create an API, a folder within your API folder, which also maps to the route. So we'll do users. And then inside your users folder, we'll use a dynamic route with um, id.get.ts. So the ID is specified in brackets like this because that makes Nitro or Nux know that this is a dynamic parameter. So if you go to slash API slash users slash one, um, the ID param would be one and two, then the ID param would be two, etc. So we have this, um, this API endpoint. So what we can do is just say export uh, default, if I can type uh, define event handler, and we're gonna make this async because we'll be doing database queries and in this event handler i'm going to show you two ways of how to query using drizzle so we created that nice drizzle composable so we can do something like const db equals uh, use drizzle 
and now we have our database. So the first way you can query your database is by um, just using a query builder that they ship with that. So that means we don't have to import our tables or anything like that. But I'll show you the second way to make it more SQL-like. Like the, the code you write almost looks like a SQL statement, making it a bit easier to guess what to do uh, as you type out complex queries. But first also we need to extract the ID from the route. And the way we do that is the ID would be um, the, we need the event that is passed to this event handler. And then we can say event dot, um, event dot context dot params dot ID. Um, so event dot context dot params could be undefined. So we can do that. And this is going to be a string. Um, so what we need to do is basically do some checks on this and say uh, if no ID throw error missing ID and if um, and what we can do is maybe also say um, make this a let and then we could say something like uh, ID equals plus ID and that would convert the um, the thing oh okay so for typing we we shouldn't actually do that we can just create a new one say const uh, id number equals plus id and this will convert your your uh, parameter to um, a number which probably we need to use some sort of library to coerce it and check if it can coerce from a number because id could be something like a, a normal string as well and if you do this you're in, going to end up getting N A N, not a number, nan, whatever. But in this case, let's assume the 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 number is passed correctly. Okay, so now we have our database as well, and what we want to do is query the user with that ID. So what we can do is say const user equals db dot users. I mean db dot query dot users, and then we can call find first, which is a nice little helper to only select the first one. And then in here, there is a where clause. And then if you remember, we exported equal and or and that stuff from our util. So we should be able just to use equal as a global thing over here. But what is actually happening, it's importing uh, equal from the um, utils and uh, database so that's where that is actually coming from but because next uh, we exported it and next uses the utils folder to make everything available auto import we don't have to do that and now we have to say where the user in tables which is also exported from our database dot users dot id is equal to id num so that's how we'll use the query. And then we could just say return user and that will return the, um, the ID number user or undefined. So we could do a check like uh, if no user return, oh, we could say uh, throw create error with the status of 404 user not found. Uh, that would be more succinct to do it that way, but let's just assume this user exists for this example. Um, we return the user. So that's one way that you can query the database. The second way is a bit more verbose, but it makes you feel like you type SQL. So we can do something like const, and this is gonna be an array, and I'll tell you why now, equals db.select and here we can define what we want to select. We could say something like id um, tables.users.id and then from tables.users dot where the tables dot, uh, where equal the tables.users.id is to id number. So <clears throat> the reason this is an array um, is because the select always returns all the rows that it matches even if we do something like dot limit one um, now we know it's either going to return one user in the array or it's going to return uh, zero so the first item in this array should actually be um, a user 
and we have to put a wait in front of this to make the query actually uh, callable. And now you can see that it says the user is ID number one. The only issue I do kind of have with this is be is that this user could be undefined um, in the first thing. And this typing doesn't tell us that um, because it knows that this array is a an array of users. It, it doesn't say it could be an array of users or an array of undefined. Um, so we always just have to remember that there could be no user as well. So that's one way you can do it and then just return the user, which would be ID number. So that's the two ways we can query. We'll be diving into queries a lot more as we uh, continue to build out this application. But for today, I just wanted to show you some of the um, initial steps to get Drizzle installed into the application. And today we're just going to delete all that and not check it into the um, repository because we aren't going to use that endpoint. But all of the other stuff we did in terms of schema migrations, everything is just fine. We'll keep building um, onto this and we'll add a little to do, add more fields. And that's it. So I hope this video gave you a little bit more sort of insight into how to bring Drizzle into the application. I thought it would be nice just to have at least a dedicated video for that. So that as we go on and I can refer back to this video for you to show you how to set up your database and not do it every single time. If you like this video, remember to like it and subscribe. And also this video is part of a course that I'm building, ship.sh, which you can go visit and sign up early or even buy the early bird for the paid videos. Um, the entire course will be posted on there as well as a lot of those videos will be for free on YouTube. I'll keep posting them here as well. But if you want to see a little bit more in-depth type stuff that we'll be doing behind the scenes, um, I really suggest you go check out the pre-order stuff and yeah. Thanks for joining this video. I'll see you in the next one.